George Santayana famously said, anybody who does not study their history <clears throat> is doomed to repeat it. I remember hearing back in the 1980s, the head of the Office of Special Investigation for the Department of Justice speaking about the first time he went to a Holocaust memorial program. But they had six candles on the front of the synagogue where he was attending this event, and they had six children walking to go to the front. Each one was going to light a candle. And he had an epiphany. He said at that moment he realized that if this had been 50 years earlier, those six children would statistically be dead. He didn't need to see the number six million. He needed to see the number six. He needed to know that those children would have been gone. And that's when it became real for him. And at that event, he said something very powerful. He said, there are Nazi uh, deniers, there's Holocaust deniers all over the world. And if you walk into a library, is it possible you might find one or two denier books? Could be, if they didn't do a good job of vetting. He said, but that's now. What happens in 50 years from now? What happens in a hundred years from now, when there's no one to refute these authors, to create a system in which we do not let this heinous event that, that took place ever be forgotten by remembering it year after year after year, we have a possible chance of making sure that in a hundred years from now, little Jimmy isn't faced with that conundrum when he has to write that report. I'm a first-generation American. Both of my parents were survivors of the Holocaust. He never really talked about his experience. It wasn't until my older sister was 16 and she had to do an oral history. And for some reason, we don't know how she convinced him, but she got him to sit down for an hour and 45 minutes and tell his story. And we have it recorded. We still have the recordings and I've transcribed them, but that's literally all we have. It cannot be emphasized more that when Nation A attacks Nation B, legitimately, illegitimately, based on lies, based on truth, you, whatever the cause is, it is a war for a purpose. What made the Holocaust unique was there was no purpose, no purpose for the annihilation of the Jewish people. It was not for assets, it was not for land, it was not for, for minerals. There was no purpose. It was for the sole purpose of we cannot stomach a world in which there are Jews living in it. The goal was to eradicate every single Jew off the face of the earth. You can't go through Holocaust Memorial Month without mentioning the fact that the Colorado National Guard was played a significant role in the liberation of Dachau. In fact, it was the liberation of Dachau at the end of April, which is why April has become the month that in this country we celebrate or we commemorate uh, this event. And uh, for many of the viewers may know or may not know that we have in our community a gentleman, Jack Adler, who was an inmate at Dachau, who was liberated as a young boy by members of the Colorado National Guard. He came to Colorado because of that, became a citizen in this country, joined the army, went and fought for the United States, and has spent his entire retirement just going around and teaching about the Holocaust and talking about the role of the Colorado National Guard and the United States Army in general in, in, uh, in his liberation. That point cannot be made more clearly. The pride I feel as a child of survivors should not be only felt by me, but should be felt by every single American, that they are part of a country that was part of the solution instead of part of the problem, that went in there for no purpose other than saving Europe, and in the process not only liberated a continent, but saved my people. I couldn't be prouder to wear this uniform. I know my parents, who are not with us anymore, are looking down, smiling at this uniform, knowing what this uniform represents, what this country represents, and the good that we do daily in the United States military.